Why hello there. Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools. On today's episode, we're giving this fence line a bit of a makeover and changing it from this to, to this. If you want to learn how to do it, keep on watching. Let it start in. Oh my poor cedar fence. This thing has been neglected for years and if you haven't seen it already, I did a full tutorial on how to install this fence over five years ago. And in all honesty, it's still very structurally sound and in great shape, but it does need a good makeover. At the time of installation, I just wanted it to naturally weather over time. And as you can see, it does have a nice gray tone to it, but I do want to bring back the inner beauty within this fence that I know is still there, which all starts first with a pressure washer. This is a 3000 PSI pressure washer, and you certainly don't need this much PSI for this job, but it does make life a little bit easier. I tighten the hose and the nozzle as well as turn on our water prior to turning on the machine. Once I have the pressure washer primed, I turn it on and away we go. Now I do decide to go with the clean nozzle for this pressure washer. There are multiple ones to choose from, but I find the clean nozzle provides the best of both worlds because it provides a wide enough spray fan to make this job extremely quick, but it also provides plenty of pressure to remove all this dirt and grime that's been here for years. The years just melt away with one pass of this pressure washer, which is truly remarkable and super satisfying, at least I must say. Keep in mind that our posts and top caps are pressure treated Douglas fir, but the actual planks themselves are cedar, and the cedar is a very soft wood. So you do want to take your time and due diligence and make sure that you're not damaging the wood as you're cleaning it. With wood like this, you can actually damage it with a pressure washer, so just make sure you back up a little bit and try and avoid any fraying like this. But this still is super satisfying to watch and we'll take care of these wood strands once they're all dried. The only other tip I have for pressure washing is to make sure you're not abruptly stopping in the middle of a board. This is kind of difficult to do, but if you can take nice fluid passes all the way across the board and end at your post, that will make it a really nice transition and you won't see any marks. Sometimes if you stop in the very middle of a board, you might see a slight discoloration or change because unintentionally left your pressure washer on that point for a mere half a second, but it can change the look of the cleanliness because of the fact these boards are so dirty. Now you could just stop here and call it good, but I want these boards to look as good as possible for as long as possible, and that's why we need to do a bit of sanding. But before we sand them, we need to let them dry out for at least 24 to 48 hours. As you can see, our pressure washer did an amazing job at cleaning the vast majority of the gunk off of these cedar planks, but we still have to sand them first before we apply our finish. So let's get to sanding and then we'll get to finishing. In order to sand all these boards properly and quickly, I'm taking my six inch random orbital sander and going over all the surfaces with 150 grit sandpaper. This is not a mandatory or fully necessary step, but it does provide a very nice professional look and feel if you're trying to make over this fence line. Plus, keep in mind that we're not trying to produce a perfectly smooth finish. We're just trying to clean up the faces of each board because the pressure washer produced small frays in the wood during the cleaning process. This sanding cleans up those wood fibers extremely easy, and it took me a mere hour to 90 minutes to do this entire fence line. And that's with me videotaping the entire process, which does take a little extra time to do everything I do. Also, make sure you're wearing a proper respirator when doing this work. Yes, you're outside and minimal dust is gonna get into your lungs, but you still don't wanna be breathing in any of the stuff that's coming off of these boards. As we complete the sanding process, it's now time for finishing. But before we apply our finish, I do suggest applying some Visqueen to the back side of the fence, especially if it's in your neighbor's yard. Just make sure you get permission first. This way, our finish doesn't accidentally seep into my neighbor's beautiful garden bed. And speaking of finish, we are using Old Master's Ascend exterior and applying it with the Wagner Control Pro QX5 sprayer. This sprayer is specifically designed for stains and finishes, and it can spray vertically as well as horizontally with just a twist of the knob. 
super functional and easy to use and by just removing the cup and filling it up with our finish, we can get to spraying in no time. Now with a clear finish like this, you don't have to worry too much about mixing it because it's not a paint, but you still should stir it around a bit just to make sure you don't have any weird variants within your finish. I fill up our cup, attach it to our nozzle housing, and away we go. But before we apply it to our fence, I do want to test it out on a test sheet. Always advise that first before you start spraying because you want to make sure it's pumping out the correct volume of finish as well as spray fan pattern. Once we like it, we can move on to our fence. And the real reason why I love spraying finish on a fence like this is because it makes it so extremely easy to apply. Especially on all those weird tight knit corners, it provides a very nice even coverage over the entire span in mere seconds versus a more long drawn out process with a roller or paintbrush. I do generally suggest working in sections, and after I have the first section fully applied with finish, I grab a large block brush. Now this block brush is designed for stains and finishes, especially exterior work, and I just wanna do a once over over the entire thing because I wanna guarantee that all that finish is seeped into the wood as smoothly as possible. Now I would never suggest using a block brush to apply this finish on this surface because the fact that it's really difficult to get into these tight knit areas and spaces, but that's why I use the sprayer first and then come back around with a block brush. The one thing to keep in mind when doing a project like this is weather and to make sure you have a consistent few days at least without any precipitation. And that's why we actually went with a water-based product on a fence like this there are plenty of amazing oil-based finishes out there, and I'll make sure and leave a link to one in the description box below that I would happily suggest, but you do need to make sure that it's at least above 60 degrees, as well as without any moisture or precipitation for 24 to 48 hours. And we don't have that in Pacific Northwest, at least at this time period. So we used a water base, which dries in a mere couple of hours. Plus the water-based cleanup is extremely easy compared to oil base. If you do want to go with an oil, I really enjoy using this Preserva Wood Penetrating Oil Stain and Sealer. It goes on extremely quickly and provides a really rich, beautiful color. But of course, the caveat is you do have to have a certain temperature requirement as well as making sure there's no precipitation in the near future. Keep that in mind. At this point in time, I wanted to say a huge and special thank you to our sponsor this week, Wagner. They wanted me to show off this new control sprayer and I really did enjoy working with it and had plenty of power for this entire project. If you wanna check out this sprayer or any of the other tools or materials that they sell that range from heat guns, rollers, surface prep tools, and of course, plenty of paint sprayers, I'll make sure and leave a link in the description box below. After I apply our first coat, I let it dry for approximately an hour and apply a second coat right after. But after all of your spraying is taken care of, you can remove your plastic visqueen on the back side and feel good that some well needed maintenance was taken care of because guess what? We are done. I truly love how this fence makeover turned out. It's remarkable what a few hours can do to transform an entire space, and now this fence line is back to its original glory and look. I wanna give another big thank you to Wagner for sponsoring this week's video because they really did make my life a lot easier on this project, and this is more than just a fence line. This is where BYOT all started because this was one of the very early on projects. And now I'm proud to say this fence line is back to being one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah. <laughs>